Hello students, in this video we'll introduce the inviscid Berger equation. So the inviscid Berger equation comes up in fluid mechanics. And what does it look like? The Berger equation looks like this. It looks like ut plus u ux is equal to zero with some initial data. Call it h of x like this. That's the initial inviscid Berger's equation with that initial data. Now, where does this come from? It comes from the following very simple fluid model. Okay, here's the fluid model we're going to consider. I'm going to consider a one-dimensional axis. Here's the x-axis. Okay, at every point on the x-axis, I'm going to be given a particle like that. I'm going to be like x1, x2, x3. And here, every particle, every particle moves with a constant velocity. Moves with constant velocity and that constant velocity is prescribed by the initial data, right? Constant velocity h of x, that's what it will be, right? And so now, of course, we're going to let u, u of xt, be the velocity at point x that came from the point x at any time t. Okay, excellent. And so what's going to happen over here is that some particles are going to move fast, like this. Some might move faster yet, but some could move what? Some could move rather slow, right? And what's going to happen in this situation, we can envision what will happen if this is moving rather fast over here at this particular point, and this point is moving rather slow, right? What's going to happen? Well, you're going to get a point over here where there's going to be a gradient discontinuity, right? So over here, the gradient of u is going to go to infinity. It's called a gradient catastrophe. Okay, so we can see from this sort of this basic idea that Berger's equation, you can develop singularities in finite time. Okay, good. So let's solve it by our, by our typical method. We're going to solve by the method of characteristics. So let's solve by the method of characteristics. Okay, what we have, we're going to have a dt over what? over 1 is equal to a dx over u is equal to a du over 0. And of course, we know this because we know that the function is going to be constant along characteristics, right? So this equation over here tells us that u is equal to c1, okay? i.e. u is constant along characteristics. Okay, excellent. Now, so I can fill that in over here into this equation, right? So if we use that, if we update our information over here, we have that dt over 1 is equal to dx over c1, because u is equal to c1. And now that says that what? That says that dx, dt, dx is equal to c1 dt. Integrating this equation over here, we have that x is really what? Is really c1 times t minus what, or plus what, plus c2. So I can write this in the following way. I can write this as x minus c1t. c1t is equal to c2, but c1 is equal to u. So this is x minus u, t is equal to c2. Okay, that's my c2. Now we can fill this in over here. So it's going to happen. So our solution, this implies that our solution to Berger's equation is phi of c1, c2 is equal to zero. But now c, I can solve this for c1. So this is going to say that u of xt is equal to some arbitrary function, which you don't know yet, f, arbitrary function of what? Of x minus u of x of t dot t. Okay, so this is a what? This is an implicit solution of the Berger's equation, right? So this is our implicit solution. to burgers. Great. Okay, now what I want to show is I want to investigate this idea of this gradient catastrophe, right? So what's this gradient catastrophe going to give us? So gradient catastrophe, gradient blow up, infinite time.
And that's why this is a good Tinker Toy example of a fluid model, right? It's a very, very simple fluid model for a one-dimensional thing, and there's gradient blow up, right? And if there's going to be a situation in higher in situations like in the incompressible Euler equations, or the Boussinesque equations, or the Navier-Stokes equations, you always sort of think back to this and think, maybe this is like some indication I might be able to con construct some singularity in these schemes. Okay, good. So how do we do this? So let's let x1 less than x2, but suppose that h of x2, my initial condition, is less than h of x1. Okay, good. All right, and then what's going to happen over here? Well, what are the characteristics? So let me write down two characteristics. What would this one be over here? This characteristic line, for example, is going to be what? It's going to be h of x1 t plus x1 comma t. So that's my gamma 1. My first characteristic, my gamma 1 is going to be h, that's my x and t, right? h of x1 t plus x1 comma t. And my characteristic 2 is the same form, right? This is going to be h of x2 t plus x2 comma t. That's my other characteristic over there. And of course, it's not drawn with the right slope, so we get the idea. My gamma 2 is going to be h of x2 t plus x2 comma t, right? And when are these x's going to coincide? These x's over here are going to coincide at what point? I can set those equal to each other and solve for t, right? So if I set those equal to each other, I'm going to have t is going to equal to x2 minus x1 over what? Over h of x1 minus h of x2. And at this time, what happens? At this time, the characteristics cross. So over here, at this time, the characteristics cross. Okay. In other words, what's happening? On one characteristic, the function is going to x, going to a finite value a, and the other characteristic is going to a different value b, right? So there's a what? Over there, there's going to be a spot where it jumps, right? So you're jumping along that trajectory. That is what? That's a spot where the derivative is going to be what? The derivative is going to be straight up there, right? So in other words, at that jump point, you have a straight up derivative, right? So that says that there's a gradient discontinuity. So gradient discontinuity. And the, the crazy thing, and this is where the, there are issues in fluid mechanics, is that this h could be what? This h could be a smooth function, right? It could be perfectly smooth. But if it's what? If at some point, you're what? If at some point you're decreasing, if at some point the function h decreases, then there's a gradient blow for Berger's equation. There's a, the solution's not well posed for all time. If, however, h is what? If h is constantly increasing, we don't have any of this danger over here, right? It's just basically getting flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter, and then the solution trajectory is fully at the entire space. Easy. So if h is increasing, we're in great shape. If it's decreasing at any points, you're in trouble, right? And so there's a ton of it. There's a wide class of initial data for this problem for which the equation is not well posed, right? It's not well posed because it has blow up. And so that's the same question you're going to address when you're talking about more complex problems in fluids, right? That's what the Navier-Stokes equations are, right? The Navier-Stokes equations say that if I give you a smooth initial profile, does it remain smooth for all time? If we think of Berger's as, an, as a very, 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 very simplistic version of Navier-Stokes, it has the same sort of structure as the nonlinearity, right? Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, with, with, there's also dissipation, right? There's also this um, incompre there's the incompressibility and dissipation with Navier-Stokes, I agree. And now, of course, we can look at the dissipative Berger's equation by putting an epsilon uxx over there, and that changes things a little bit, right? And so we can use the Kohlhoff transformation, which we'll see in further videos, to analyze this Berger's equation when there's dissipation. That gets us closer to a model of Navier-Stokes, right? But nonetheless, we get really sort of useful information about the structure of the, of the, of the blow-up for Berger's equations using the method of characteristics and using this functional description of what the solutions of the Berger's equations has to solve. Thank you very much.